guys, welcome and welcome back to the Acquisitions Knitting Podcast. I'm Victoria, you can call me Vic, you can call me Celine or whatever. Um, and I have um, Jasmine Green Tea, Jasmine Green Milk Tea. And I hope you got something to drink. Whether it be water, wine, coffee, you know, something. Lemonade? (laughs) It's hot enough for lemonade now. Um, Whatever. I guess it depends where you are in the world. If you're more north, maybe not. If you're more south or in the southern hemisphere, maybe not. Um... So, what I'm going to start with is what I'm wearing, which is also a finished object. And then we'll go into whips. Got four today. So, for me, that's lit. a lot of whips. Um, not including an abandoned whip. Um, or formerly abandoned whip. Is one of my whips works works in progress. Um, okay, I'll just start with what I'm wearing, and I'm wearing the Euless Genser or Jules sweater, Euless sweater. Um, the fit on me is a little strange, or it's not as advertised, or maybe it's because I don't have the body structure as the same model but whatever um the fit is interesting that's all I gotta say about that and the sleeves are like I mean not as balloon like as the photo but I've also not blocked it and I haven't woven in the ends either, so yeah. Um, so the thing that bothers me the most about the fit is that the, what's this called? Like the armpit area, it's much longer than where my armpit is. Like my armpit's right here which is like in the pattern, right? And then I have like all this space, maybe like five, no, like four inches about. Yeah, it's just so much. It's like halfway down my arm already when the um, sleeve separates from the body. It's just like halfway down my arm and that's like so weird but maybe I need to block it and stretch it out so then it like shortens this way the length shortens if I stretch it widthwise maybe that will solve it um so if I ever get to blocking it I'll give you an update on the fit, (laughs) but yeah, I did everything as, um, as the pattern says to do, like it tells you to close up the armholes, um, but well, it's just a tip, so technically you don't have to follow it that tip, but you know, like add one more on each side and then decrease it uh, when you pick up the stitches so then it would close up that armhole a lot more than if you didn't do that so the uh, holes are reduced it's still there but it's reduced Um, but I don't find that I even care about the holes there because I don't really like lift up my arm that much And if I do, ain't nobody gonna see it, so 
That's my opinion on it. I don't know. But then if I stretch it width-wise, then this gets shorter, and that's like... What do you call it? It's like, it might get too short, like right here. I don't know. Yeah, and I'm just wearing a sports bra underneath because it's like hot. It's 76 right now, and it's gonna get to 79 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's pretty hot for me. But, um, but in this room, it's really cold still. It's 72, so compared to outside, it's cold. <laughs> so I'm just wearing this, uh, and that's why I, I freaking even made this in the first place is for like mornings when it's cold it can be like 65 in the morning so that's what this is for chilly mornings well it doesn't warm up until like 2 p.m anyways so there's that it does have a use for me in california because there's no humidity unless it rains that's when there's humidity so i mean that's wrong <laughs> i mean we're not like las vegas where there's zero percent humidity for 40 percent most times because we're coastal or i'm in coastal california so yeah uh keep confusing myself honestly um right I think I used four balls of what's it called um four balls of the knitting for olive soft silk mohair in the color way cherry blossom and I haven't even touched the other two balls and I still have just a little left, but it's definitely not enough for one more round of the body. So yeah, I'm glad I bound off before um, I used that up and then I'll have to start another ball. But yeah, so I have two untouched balls of uh, soft silk mohair, which is great. So I can use it for something else there's two of them so I could hold it double with a Jolie sweater or a Jolie pen sweater. Um, I mean that's what I had planned but I could always use it for something else. Um, and I used the C-knit um, interchangeable bamboo needles. The the white version ones, the lighter colored bamboo needles, um, cause I didn't want to pay extra for the koshitsu, which is the more durable, hard wearing one. I think, um, at least they advertise it like that, but I don't know if that's one hundred percent true. Um, and I got the. Uh, 2.5 millimeter to 3.25 millimeter packs so it's four needle sets each um, yeah because I need interchangeables um, from 2.5 to 3 but like nobody sells that unless it's like I think it's only this brand that sells that um, in interchangeable needles and like Chiaogu which is also equally as expensive but these are bamboo and I don't like metal needles because they click and they clack and I'm not a fan of that this is too noisy for me I'm like really sensitive to noises sometimes 
And it's, especially when it's consistent noise. Um, and I find that the brass fittings on the cables, on the needles that I've used, like they keep tarnishing. But that's the nature of brass anyway. And here's another example of brass tarnishing. I mean, brass tarnishes with humidity and sweat and um, water basically and it oxidizes every time it comes into contact with water or sweat or humidity so and I had to learn that the hard way um, through JROTC and that stands for like the junior reserve officer training corps um, which is basically a high school version of ROTC. ROTC is in college and it's basically prepping you to go into the military but you don't have to go to the military in JROTC because you don't sign a contract, you're in high school, they can't they can't let you sign a contract until you turn 18 um, or after graduating high school. Uh, so and if you're 17 you graduate high school, you have to get your parents' consent to go to get to get into um, either an, an, an uh, either an, an enlistment or the ROTC program in university. Um, but all that to say that in JROTC, I had to, or we all had to um, polish or shine um, brass insignias. Um, what's it called? Like, not buttons, like, an, like pins that you put on your like lapel, on your jacket, and like, the insignia on your hat, like your belt buckle, which is also made out of brass. Like, I don't know why they freaking made everything out of brass, but yeah, that's why we had to shine it because it tarnishes so easily and it becomes foggy like the day after, <laughs> the day after you shine it, basically. So that was the bane of my existence in high school. Like the worst and then I would also like grade people <laughs> on if they or like check if they shine their brass stuff basically um so this is just to show how tarnished my Ooh. I need to get something that's not skin colored. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but these two on the my right side, maybe your left. Um, these two are bronzy color but they used to be gold which is this color so I'm assuming this is made out of brass because it tarnished when I was outside and um, it was hot and my hands sweat when it's hot so yeah and I was working on the Ulysses Gensler so that's probably what happened. And now I have two bronze. Uh, well, they are safety pins. Um, but I use them as dish markers. The two bronze dish markers, which used to be gold. Um, wow, I really didn't need to rent on that long. Okay, so this is the first I was about to say, but it's an FO, finished objects. 
Um, maybe so. And we'll go on to the next whip work in progress. Um, I know like two episodes ago I said that I have an, an, an abandoned whip that I didn't know when I was gonna finish it. Um, so here it is. It's a basket. That used to be white and now it's yellow because it's been so long and it's been sitting in a little under my desk because I've been using it even though it's not finished um, and I used um, nylon string from the home improvement store And this is like the new one that I got this year. And this one is the one that I got like last year, early last year, 2021. Um, I didn't make it until I wanna say like October. And um, because it's been so long, they didn't have the original string that I was using because this is a it's a twisted nylon cord um but it's a higher twist than the one I have right now but you know I can't choose because it's the only one they had in white so it's still a twisted cord but it's much softer than the original one and it's like I think it's because it's softer it's becomes thinner so it's working up very differently than what the bottom is which is fine like I'm not too picky about that um and it's kind of nice because it'll cinch in the whole thing a little because it's kind of floppy right now um yeah, I've only done like four rows or so. Or like five rows since I got it, which is like the first week I got it. Um, last week, I think. Two weeks ago. Mm, I guess about two weeks ago. Um, but let me show you the packaging it came in. Let me get it first. It's a little dusty. But yeah, it's a white twisted nylon mason line. Um, it's a thousand feet, which is 300 meters. And it was like 12 bucks each. Which is, which is kind of a lot, but I mean, it's fine. Oh, and I guess you could see, see that it's like, um, I got this at Home Depot. Ugh, and it's so dusty. So yeah, I have another one, just in case. I run out and I probably also need it for my plants um, if I do sweet peas or like I don't know maybe it's a little late to do sweet peas but or to plant sweet peas because it's so hot already but whatever I just undid some stuff. Um, let me redo that real quick. Can you see it, huh? 
and I'm using a 4.25 millimeter hook because I don't have a 4.5 or or a 4 millimeter hook. And the thing about this um, nylon cord that I really dislike is that it splits easily. Like each individual strand in the cord, which, you know, there's like a thousand basically. So that's kind of annoying working with this, but I mean, nobody else sells, I mean, all home improvement stores sell nylon, but I was hoping to get the same one, but it's not, so that kind of sucks. It's also been here, so maybe their uh, production, or maybe they changed the factory that they got it from, or that manufactures it. So, yeah. Uh, and it's much, much, much more white than the other one, so you can definitely tell um, where I ran out of the nylon. Um, yeah. And for the next whip, I made a ton of progress on the corslet tank by Jackson Knitwear. Um, I put it on the shorter cord, but it's still quite long. Like, I don't have a shorter one for this. How do I show it to you? Well, this is the front with the straps, the half straps. So it doesn't really look like too much, but they have like the, what do you call it? The sides. There's like three um, pearl stripes, and the back has one. I mean, I like the design because it's so simple um, so far. But I always have trouble with um, counting the, what do you call it? The decrease rows. I've only done four decreases. I think I still have quite a bit more to go. And I'm like, oh, I wonder how long this would be. Right? Be quite long. But it's only like past my boobs. So I still have quite a bit, like halfway more to go, basically, until. I can um, do the front part and the part that makes it a corslet. Um, but yeah, every time I look at this yarn, I'm like, it's quite a warm color. I'm like, is that too close to my skin tone? I don't know. Will I regret the color? Maybe, but. I mean, I could always read this in a different yarn anyways. Or make another one. Yeah. But so far, I like it. And this is like the progress from basically here to here. That's the progress that I've made in like two days. <laughs> because I've only, I just keep um, working on other whips even though I should work on this. And the deadline is coming soon, which is the end of June in less than 20 days. So I should really work, dedicate my time to work on this. But I've been working on the other project and also worked on this too in the meantime.
and I'm so close to finishing the first two balls, but um, because this is fingering weight yarn and this calls for a DK weight yarn, so that's why I had to double it. Um, but normally you could just use a DK. And um, you can use the merino or, or not a merino, but like any yarn. Um, what am I trying to say? You can use a wool type. Um, but I don't recommend alpaca just because it has to um, hold its shape together and alpaca drapes way too much for this kind of tank so any type of wool will be fine but that's not alpaca um, or maybe cashmere as well but I think cashmere also holds its shape but not as well as other wools or other wools like merino merino does hold its shape quite well um, yeah, so as long as the fiber can hold its shape, it would be fine. Um, or a plant fiber that doesn't stretch that much, like cotton. But I've also heard that linen stretches, but don't quote me on that because I haven't found. I haven't washed it yet, so I don't know. But I don't know why, but people keep saying that silk or that pure silk can't be machine washed, but it can. Or you can't wet block it. Well, that's completely untrue. I had to wet block it and stretch it with my hands because it wouldn't stretch otherwise. So. Yeah, but that's only for barrette silk, which is a much rougher silk. Um, but after you wash it, it's quite supple. Um, but yeah, or at least for the knitting for olive pure silk, it's true for that. And I find it to be a nice knitting silk because it does. Um, hold on to each other because it's rough. It's a rougher silk. It doesn't like slip and slide like a superwash uh, merino wood or a smoother silk wood. And actually, I had a problem with the pure silk bouncing back to its original shape because I, I blocked it to Originally, it was um, 21 centimeters on the from the armhole to the hem. That was 21 centimeters, and then I blocked it, or I wet blocked it to 24 centimeters, um, and it stayed in its shape quite well after a few wears, until I sweated like crazy in it when it was like. 90 degrees um, and it shortened quite a bit and it widened because that was its original shape um, before I blocked it so that's concerning for me at least because I want to wear it in the summer when it's really really hot um, and obviously I would sweat naturally um, so now I'm like can I wear it and sweat in it without it bouncing back to its original shape like I don't know like ugh, that's so annoying if I have to wet block it every single time instead of just like hanging it to dry or something um, but yeah it's much wider which, I mean, I guess it's much flowier. 
um, because of that, but I need it to be longer. So I don't know if I should, well, I'm just gonna freaking wash it and then we'll see. And then wet block it, I guess, again. Wash it in the washing machine on cold in a delicate bag. Um, because I wash my stuff with zippers. And zippers can really damage silk. Um, and I learned that the hard way because I had a um, blanket cover, duvet cover that, that was made out of silk. And we put it in a washer and it tore because it was so thin. Um, and because I washed it with another duvet cover with uh, with a zipper on it because they both had zippers um, so, and it the zipper tore through the freaking silk because there's two of them um, yeah so as long as you protect your silk from um, zippers it should be fine to put it in a washing machine. Always wash on cold. And, um, yeah. And put it in a delicate bag. But uh, other than that, then who cares? Silk is a very durable fabric, but if it's very thin, it can get damaged in washing. Um, especially if we knit it then it's not as susceptible to like damage as like a very thin woven silk is because that was super thin I mean the one that I destroyed um, okay so the next whip is not a knitting thing um, and if you're new here I do a lot of other fiber arts that's not just crocheting and knitting. Um, so yeah, let me show you it. So I think last time or last episode, I showed you just with the, um, I haven't even started a pattern yet, but now I'm almost completed the pattern. So yeah, so this is where I ended last episode, is right here, down here, which you probably can't even see anymore. I don't know, can you see that? Probably not. Um, but yeah, I'm almost done with this, I, um, basically almost completed one repeat vertically um, but then I got kind of close to the top so there's like less room to work with now and it's becoming harder to like pick or pick up the warp and because of that I won't be able to shove um, my tools through it like this this is a nine millimeter crochet hook and I use it to grab onto like go through the warp oops and then on the other end grab one of the wefts and then just pull it through that's what I use this for um yeah and I won't be able to do that if I go too far up um, and I use this bone folder just to keep one pattern of the warps forward and the one in the back. So at least one pass of the weft is faster than just picking each warp individually. Because I have to do that for the other... Um, What's it called? The other warp thing. 
But can you see the pattern though? From back here? Is it easier to see? Or is it easier to see when it's up close? But yeah. It's hard to see in person, honestly. But in the mirror or like in um in the camera, it looks much better <laughs> than in, than up close. Um I definitely made like a huge mistake here where I didn't use um like a guide to guide my scissors. Cause this is um eight millimeters thick. I mean, it says nine, but I measured it and it was like eight millimeters thick. So then if I put my scissors on top of it like this and then cut, it would be around one centimeter. Or at least that was my hope, but I think it is like a centimeter or eight millimeters thick here. Or like from halfway to here because I didn't um, use it after like the first three um, rows so then I was like wait is it getting thicker and I measured it I'm like yeah it's like over one centimeter I'm like ah oh, shit I gotta I really do have to use like a guide um, so that's what I did so now I'm like, after finishing this, oh, I still, I think I did made like, maybe a few faux pas <laughs> in this sample still. Like I made every mistake you can make with this one. So, and I definitely reduced the mistakes I made in this, but I still made the cutting mistake. And then also, um, I switched the the weft pattern because I used this one first, the one with the bone folder. I used that one first, and then the other weft pattern by picking up the first pair, the first wet warp in the pair and the one that's forward is the second one of a pair does that make sense oh my gosh if you don't know weaving i don't know if that even makes sense um probably not but yeah Because for each pair, one pair goes forward, or one of them goes forward, and one goes back, and then vice versa. So, yeah, I switched the weft. Um, let's see. And I followed a, tu tu a tutorial by Handicrafts A to Z or A to Z on YouTube. Um, and I just followed her tutorial for it, but I didn't watch the second part, or like, part two of the video, which is a, in a different video, um, to see how she did the pattern. I only saw when she uh, did the first two rows, and that's it. Um, which probably, I shouldn't have done that, but yeah. Oh well. And then the edges hide the the weft yarn. Um, so it's, it makes a very very neat edge, and you'll never, hopefully, never see the weft yarn. But I mean, <clears throat> but I had to. Um, what do you call it? Put in new weft yarn because it wasn't long enough for this pattern so I had to add new ones 
Um, I probably have to add a few more new ones because I didn't, I forgot to make it long enough for after the pattern ends. Um, yeah. Oops. And these are the ends, the end um, cushion or whatever I call it. The edge stitch basically, the edge weft, is that what you call it? I don't know. Um, yeah. And I also learned a new technique. Um, I think it's called twining, where you just wrap, um, what do you call it? You wrap each warp with a weft, and you keep twisting the weft around the warp. That's twining, or at least that's what I think that's what I follow the tutorial for um, because it kind of like locks in your stitches or not your stitches it locks in your warp, uh, weft onto the warp uh, so many W's tires me out so yeah hopefully I'll be done after two more rows and then a crap ton of rows of the linen yarn that I use as the weft because this is the pile this is the weft this is the warp uh, <laughs> am I missing anything else? I don't know but yeah kinda proud of myself for finishing the sample because it's actually quite big but it's kinda fun because I used three different colors um, and one of the faux pas I made is um, I used three different um, yarn weights and I think that was a huge mistake but it's what I had on hand so the blue one is, um, is an iron weight the brown one is a an apaca, which is probably not so good, which is this one, the one that I use on the edges um, and on the border. That's the apaca, which is a DK weight, and the iron weight is a wool and alpaca blend, and then the lightest color, which is a natural shade, um, is mohair and alpaca. So, I guess the one thing in common is that all alpaca or, or alpaca blends, but yeah, it's mohair and alpaca, and it's a fingering weight yarn. So, for the stitch, or for the pile, I used two strands of the fingering weight mohair alpaca, and then I used two strands of DK, and then I used one strand of the Aran. And the Aran weight is so fluffy compared to the mohair and alpaca. Because the mohair and alpaca is just so like stiff, which makes it great to use as the pile yarn or for the pile, but it's really shitty to use as a weft. So I can't use it as a weft or the edge. I can't use it as an edge thing. Um, and because I can't use the alpaca, the lightest color as an edge, I had to use the 100% DK alpaca. I single stranded too. Um, which maybe I could have doubled it, but I think it would have been way too thick. But yeah, um, I like, I like feel the back and it's like, it feels sturdy, but after I snip it off this, I'm not so sure that it would stay 
the same after wet blocking or after washing this I'm kind of like uh, didn't make a mistake doing the warps because I have a hunch that maybe I've done it too tight so we'll see how that goes I'm just hoping that it just doesn't change its shape too much because that would be really really bad but yeah it's nice and fluffy though oh and the uh, the blue is quite it's much darker after you cut it than what I expected it to be because um, the yarn looks much lighter in the skein so I'll show you the yarns I'm using so I'm using some stash some balls of stash that I had a yarn in my stash um, so it drops in Nepal and um, in the color of fog mix the color number is 8907 or 8907 um, yeah so Aaron weight is 75 meters per 50 grams nice and squishy and it's much lighter than the end I don't know if you can see that but the end is no you can't see that Can you see it? The end is much darker because this is like you're like it's smoother on the outside, right? So then it can reflect the light a little better. Maybe I'll keep that in. I have to see my setup, my rickety setup. Maybe you need that here. So if you were surprised by that, so sorry. I'm not gonna edit it out because I am lazy <laughs> and also I don't have an editing program for it okay so the next yarn is drops Puna which is a DK alpaca in the color 202 um, yeah it just looks like this this is just the leftover and I still and not even close to done using the leftover from my champagne cardigan and I have, still have two untouched balls of Puna yeah I don't know what, what I can do with that um, and weaving surprisingly doesn't take that much yarn but maybe I'm saying that because I'm making such a small sample who knows and um, for the warp and weft, I'm using 100% linen. This is just a ball that I wound off um, or wind it up into a ball from the cone that I have from Color Mart. Um, this is the natural shade, which is super white, actually. Um, but yeah, and I still haven't finished this. And I wound this off for a sample. But I haven't made the sample because I've been too lazy. Or the needle has been in use this whole time. Which, yeah, it's been in use this whole time. So, probably gonna do that soon. And um, this is the alpaca 
and mohair blend and that I got from Color Mart that I was gonna use for the Ingrid sweater, but it's A, not the right weight, and B, it's really rough. But it's really soft when you cut it on the end, so. It's great for uh, tapestry, I guess. Or for for piles, not really tapestry. I mean, this is, this is a tapestry, but it's Persian tapestry, and this is the pile. And I can't use this as a weft, but I could definitely use this as a warp because it's very sturdy, it's very durable, so, yeah, I'm thinking of doing another one with this as the warp and then using my Drops Nepal as, as the pile, but I have no idea what other color to use with it because I actually don't have another Aran weight yarn. So that is... Uh, and I don't want to buy more yarn because I have so much and I still have at least two or three projects that I'm thinking of doing but I can't... I don't want to cast it on until I finish with the corslet tank um, yeah, so I have less whips in general, and I, I don't have to worry about the deadline, because the testnet deadline is coming soon. So, yeah. I think that's it. Take another sip of your drink. Mine is cold now. Sorry about knocking my phone camera down. Um, oh yes, let me show you how much clippings I have. This is all the clippings I have, oops, I dropped some, um, from each row. I had to clip it off each row um, so that the pile stays consistent. Um, and yeah, so I've been braving this in because I've been saving this that I can toss it later or use as stuffing, but I don't know if I can keep this um, just because it's so fluffy um, and the amount of um, little particles there is, it's like a lot and I don't want to keep it in my bedroom because uh, I don't want to keep breathing the scent so I'm just going to toss it in the trash uh, like right now Um, and only kept it to show you guys how much um, I had to waste because um, you do have to reach a certain level where your fingers can still tug on it. Um, so yeah, you do have to waste a little bit and then you do have to cut um, every row so yeah that ends up wasting quite a bit of yarn but it's necessary for this kind of um, tapestry weaving um, you could definitely do this kind of tapestry weaving on a rigid, rigid head of loom um, or any loom that you want 
but it's faster on a rigid heddle because that's um I think much like it can fit on a table and that's um useful and then you can um switch to warps really fast instead of doing it the way I'm doing it where you just pick up one by one um and that's the part that I hate the most is doing is um weaving the weft I like uh, weaving the pile, the Turkish knot pile, because it's much funner. And then, um, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. Oh, I always forget something. Um, so in this book where I put a lot of um, crochet stuff in, and some knitting stuff, because um, this is. Like basically graph paper, the Rhodia graph paper, um, and it's the five by five, five inches by five inches. No, it's not. Um, well, here you go. It's the block Rhodia, um, number thirteen with the high grade vellum paper oh no wonder I like it, it's vellum um, and the sheet it's 80 sheets 80 grams per meter squared which is uh, 21.3 pounds um, that's only if you like know anything about paper it probably means nothing to most people but means something to me <laughs> when it's 21.3 pounds, which means it's quite thin paper, but it's sturdy enough for what I'm using it for. Um, so I have the Asanoha pattern, um, which is the hemp leaf pattern, a traditional, traditional hemp leaf pattern, but I um, pulled it from the Asanoha knitting pattern, um, which Side note, I don't have the paper, or I don't have the book for it, but I gleaned off um, from someone knitted, that knitted this pattern and I put it in a graph paper. Yeah. And so I just used this as a template to experiment with the tapestry weaving. Um, and yeah so I mean it's coming out quite well and um, in this kind of Persian tapestry weaving um, that requires a pile you do use a graph paper no it's basically pixel art um, so that makes it kind of fun because you can make whatever you want and then put it on the tapestry. Or you could just wing it because that's a thing people do apparently in this kind of um, tapestry. Yeah, you can wing it if you wanted to, <laughs> which is kind of dangerous, kind of fun, but you still have to do it row by row. So if you are um, winging it, you'd have to uh, complete like a section and then, or just start like, I don't know. It's just hard to explain without seeing it. But yeah, you would have to still do it row by row um, because you have to put in the weft yarn after each row of pile and two left um yeah so that makes it a little more challenging to um change the pattern a little bit but um yeah 
there's definitely patterns out there that you can do that is um, more graphic than the one I'm doing right now or maybe it, it just looks better than what I'm doing right now but yeah hope you guys liked this podcast it's a little all over the place um, I'm gonna go take off this <laughs> and then go knit outside and eat lunch. Um, yeah. There's nothing else to say. Hope you guys had made some progress knitting. And I hope I didn't scare you guys too much <laughs> with dropping my phone. So, yeah. I'll see you guys next week. Even um, I'm sorry for posting this super late, but yeah. Hopefully, I can film on Saturday or Sunday, um, so I can get it up on time instead of filming on Tuesday, <laughs> which is like only a few days. So I'm like, oh, should I just skip this week? I was like, oh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to film it Saturday or Sunday. So, see you in a few days. <laughs> Bye.